Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to share another wall art idea with you. This is actually something that a subscriber had sent to me. I believe it is from Wayfair.com. It is $411.40. And you know, art is expensive. There is no price limit to it. So I'm not surprised it costs that much. It's very interesting, very unique. But I'm going to make my own um, in case you want to do it yourself and want to save a couple of dollars. I'm going to show you something similar. It looks like this piece is made out of metal and I'm not going to be able to do it in metal. But I do have a great alternative. So stay tuned and I will show you the steps that I took. I'm going to first start off with this modeling clay that I found on Amazon. It is about $10 to $11, not much. And you can make a couple of items with that. Actually, I'm using the extra clay that I had from the other project that I did. If you have not seen that project, I will link it at the top so you can see that. But for this particular project, I'm going to create the disc using the clay. And what I'm going to do is take a you know, small ball and roll it together in my hand and then press it down with my palm and I'm placing it on a parchment paper. Uh, this is so that it does not stick to my countertop. So I'm just going to continue doing that. I'm going to make a couple of discs. I'm not gonna make as much as in the original art. Um, I'm just gonna go off of what I can do with the extra clay that I have. The reason why I am balling it up in my hand is to make the clay a little bit more agile so that I can create the shape that I want. These shapes are gonna be very different from each other. I want some of the shapes to be very odd, um, curled up or flat. I want each disc to be different. Here's a look at the clay disc that I made. I believe there's 17 total. And what I'm going to do is just let it dry for about 48 hours. Um, it is dry at 24, but it's probably not completely dry. This is a great time to make any adjustments that you want. So just look at your disc and see if that is exactly how you want to have it. Now that my discs are dry, I am going to add a black circle in the middle. If you notice in the original art, there is a black round shape in the middle. So I'm going to do that for each of my discs. Now that the inner part of the disc are dry, I'm going to play with a couple of Arteza's paint colors and this one is gold. And I'm going to paint it on using an angled brush. For the second row, I'm going to use the acrylic color Pearl Deep Brown. You know, usually I do not like brown. Brown is not really my favorite color, but you know, I really love this particular brown. It's just it has a lot of sheen to it, a lot of that metallic vibe that I really love. I just, oh, I just love that color. For the third row, I'm going to paint the outer part with bronze. And for the fourth row, I'm going to use this pearl space gray. 
the pearl space gray was a little bit dark so I'm going to go over it with a silver color. I do want some of the gray to show but I just want to lighten it up a little bit. Here's how it looked once it was dry. You see that sheen? Ooh, the light hits it at the right angle. It's going to pop. I decided to go over the gold a little bit with the silver and once that dried, I went back over with some gold. So you can kind of see gold and silver on these particular discs. Okay, so now we have to display these pretty discs. So I'm going to put it in this poster frame that is 11 by 75 by 36. And this is something that I found at Walmart, but you probably can find it other places online as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is take the backing out and I'm going to paint it. Here's the craft paint that I'm using is by Craftsmart. And I'm also going to be using a sponge brush. Do you see this? I put the paint in the cup and then I could not put the brush in the cup. <laughs> so I tried to pour the paint out and it wouldn't come out. Then I just poured it on top of the backing, but I really didn't have a lot of paint, so it ran out. Thank goodness I had some more available. So I just poured that on the backing and then all was well. If you do decide to do this, you will notice once you put the paint on the cardboard, you will notice that it will curl up a little bit, but it's completely fine. Once it dries completely, it will flatten back out. I want to do a little bit something different for my art piece and make it more reflective so I decided to use some mirror sheets that I had. Actually I only use one. Um, so what I'm going to do is turn it over and then I'm just going to trace the shape of my disc. You want to make sure you have a little bit of space in between each of the discs that you trace out. First, I was going to trace one out for each of the discs that I did, but then I decided to just do a couple of them. Next, I cut the shapes out, but I did not cut along the line. I cut around the line, so I wanted it to be a little bit bigger than the actual shape that I traced out. Now that that's completed, I'm going to position the disc where I want it on the backing. I had went to Hobby Lobby recently and I saw these little doll pin stands that I thought would be great for this project. So I'm going to use that to kind of raise up the disc as well as put some of it on the backing. Wow, thank goodness I have video editing. It took me a long time to figure out where I want it. Now that I had everything in position, I decided to add a little bit of the doll stands on the outer perimeter of the disc. After that, I was ready to glue it down.
The next step was to take the frame and add a little bit of glue on the inside and then insert my backing. By adding the glue, it will help secure the backing because I did remove the tabs on the inside. I didn't show this on camera, so be sure to take the tabs out. I had an additional poster frame, so I decided I'm going to double this up. I'm going to put hot glue on the top of this frame, add some E6000, and um, attach the other frame to it. At this step, you want to work really fast because the hot glue will dry. Since I've already done this project, I want to suggest putting the E6000 on there first and then put the hot glue. In addition, you wanna make sure you do not have any glue strings once you attach the top of this. Here's how it turned out. To hang this up, I use an Ook picture hanger, but you can also use command strips as well. I truly hope that this video was helpful and inspirational to you. I love this piece, let me tell you. Thanks guys for watching. Have a great week.